My name is Sid, and I'm here to give you an introduction to C++ for competitive programming. Competitive programming is basically an art form. It's beautiful and analytically compl and algorithmically complex. Competitive programmers use their skills with algorithms, data structures, and problem solving to solve challenging problems in a limited time frame. My preferred uh, programming language for competitive programming is C++, like many other people. Although a lot of other programming languages are allowed in competitive programming contests, uh, most people do tend to use C++ or Java, with a large, with the majority picking C++ due to its standard template library, which allows for, which has a lot of great built-in data structures and some uh, pre-built algorithms that allow you to get up and running really quickly. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Uh, I'm going to start off by teaching the basics, the input, output, for loops, while loops. So let's just call this intro.cpp. Now with every C++ file, at the beginning, especially for competitive programming, you're going to have to include the standard C++ library, bits slash standard C++ dot h. Um, after that, you do. Now basically, what this code is, you're importing, for those of you familiar with Python, a library, the standard library for C++, and using namespace standard just helps you shorten a lot of code. Uh, a lot of competitive programmers like to shorten their code, and this is just one thing that allows you to shorten a little bit. Uh, you'll also probably see people doing things like hashtag define, and don't worry about this yet, I'll get to that very shortly, but if you can code up your but if you can code up your solution faster, you'll be able to solve the problem faster and get to a better end result. Now, clearly the first thing you want to do with every programming language you start is say, hello world. So, count here is how we say hello world in C++. Without using namespace standard, it would be something like, is how you would write that line without using namespace standard. So, it saves you a lot of characters over the course of a program to say using namespace std uh, my coding environment is a uh, i code on windows and i use windows subsystem for linux which really just helps me get up and running and allows me to compile programs easily uh, as you can see to compile a c++ program all you have to do is in the directory that the file is in g++ the name of the file this compiles the file, and then to run the file, you have to do dot slash a dot out, as long as you're on a Unix-based system, which is, in this case, WSL is, and voila, hello world appears on our terminal. Uh, now that we have the basics out of the way, let's get into some slightly more complex things. I'm going to assume you're familiar with some sort of programming language which would make things a little easier, but if you're not, I believe that this will serve uh, you just as well. <clears throat> uh, typically, when you're doing a competitive programming contest on something like CodeForces or AtCoder, uh, you'll be giving an input through the standard input-output system. Uh, using count is standard input, uh, standard output, sorry, and then to take in standard input, you do sin, uh, well first let's declare a variable, int n. What this does is it takes in a variable, it takes in something, an input from the terminal, and then assigns it to the variable n. So let's try this out. If you can't tell, what this program is doing is is taking an input from the command from the terminal, the standard input, and then it is outputting it to the terminal, the standard output, so we can see what we typed in. Just compile and run. We input the number 42, and it outputs the number 42. That's crazy. Um, now that we know how to take in input, we can move on to some of the data structures that C++ has. 
you have obviously your integers you have your characters you have your strings and you have oops forgot to name my character you have your strings and you have floats doubles and long longs now clearly it, if you want to be if you're writing long long multiple times in your program that's going to take a lot of time for you to write so people used to like to use macros so now all I have to do instead of writing long long multiple times is just and bam now you save three four seven characters you save seven characters that adds up uh, now that you've been introduced to the data types well in case you don't know what these data types well yet yeah, an integer is an integer uh, a character just one singular character you can't hold the whole string a string holds multiple <coughs> characters uh, a float is a way of representing decimals and a double is also a way of representing decimals I prefer using doubles because floating point arithmetic uh, gets to be a little weird and then a long long has more capacity uh, than an integer so in some competitive programming problems where your uh, input exceeds a certain number uh, then you would prefer to use long longs as that way uh, your program will not produce uh, unwanted behavior. So we've now covered standard input, standard output, and data types. The next thing that we can cover is loops of all different sorts. Tip, you're going to end up using for loops a lot in your uh, competitive programming career. So this is just based, this is just the standard C++ for loop. And assume you're taking in four integers. You would say four int i equals zero, i less than four, i plus plus. And essentially what this does is starting with i equals zero, or the first element, we take in one, we take in one integer, a, and then we output that integer on the screen. Now, every time we do this, we increase the increment by one, allowing us to develop, uh, allowing us to move on and get however many uh, integers we need, which is defined as a variable n. Uh, in competitive programming scenarios, n will be given to you by the uh, standard input. So you would do sin n. And now, however many integers that they want you to take, you can take them in. And that's just how you use the for loop. The other loop, the while, is while some condition uh, is true, uh, do something. So uh, I don't. I typically don't use this a lot in contests. I just use for loops uh, because sometimes with while loops you can type something in wrong and then you'll get an infinite loop going. But the essence of the thing is, while you have something, while some condition is true, you're going to do something else. So while you're hungry, you're going to eat until you're no longer hungry. Uh, that's just an example of what a while loop is. Uh, I, I typically don't use this a lot in my computer programs, uh, but they do, but a lot of people do, so it's use their own. Now that we have while and for loops covered, another important part of uh, competitive pro of programming in general is knowing how to use logic statements.
So, logic statements are pretty basic. Uh, if something is true, then do this. Otherwise, do this thing. In this case, if 1 equals 1, then we output true. And if it's false, then we output false. Nothing mind-blowing here. Uh, that's basically, that is the basics of what you need to know about C++ to get any sort of program going. We covered loops, conditional statements, input and output, and data types. I'll have more in-depth videos coming soon covering everything from data structures like vectors, uh, arrays, to algorithms like depth first search, breadth first search, and pathfinding algorithms like Dijkstra's. If you don't know what a lot of those words are yet, that's fine. Uh, this video was a little fast, but we're going to slow down a lot in the next, on the next couple of videos, go in depth, and really build the fundamentals from the bottom up, and hopefully that'll make you a great competitive programmer and really improve your programming skills as a whole. Uh, I did write an article about this. Uh, it's on my medium. It's on my medium page. It's in the description. And until then, keep coding.